Shut up and sit down. There we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about some things that I think about a lot. I just wanted to share with everybody else because it's important to me. And if it's important to me, then it needs to be important to you. So if you're an online business, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to build a career, whatever it is, today is relevant to you. So if you're catching this live, let me know you're here live. If you're watching the replay, let me know you're watching the replay. Let's do this and have some fun, shall we? I'm excited. Excited. So let me just bring this up for you. Preston, what's up, buddy? Good to see you here, my man. Bring it up, bring it up. Come on now. Seen it okay. It's not sharing my screen like I want. Reading. All right. Well, you all just have to listen to me then instead of seeing this beautiful presentation I put together. Try this one more time. There we go. Here we go. All right. Can everybody see this okay? Get this slideshow on the road, shall we? So... We have what's called a SWOT analysis. We have SMART goals. And the flip side of that is how it all ties together with mindset. And basically, what is a SWOT analysis? What is SMART goals? We're going to talk about that. And I'm going to tell you a little more about how it uh, ties in. Well, SWOT analysis and SMART goals are decision planning tactics that they use in the military. 
They use them to plan missions. They use them to plan training exercises. They've been using them for years. Me personally, I learned about them when I was working in the oil field. Um, I used to use it every day, all day in everything I did. Um, planning my job execution, pre-trip planning before we rolled out, uh, on and on and on, right? And the cool thing is you just put it on paper and you can adjust them as you need it. It's a fluid fluid plan in your head or on paper and you just roll with it and change it as you go. They're not set in stone, right? It's something that's meant to be rethought, adjust on the fly, and away you go, carry on. So SWAT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And a properly done SWAT is going to help define the process that you're going to follow to map out your goals. So you really got to you really got to force yourself to look at everything because it kind of you really got to look at, especially when you get to threats and weaknesses, right? But the cool thing is, once you've developed it, once you get used to it, it's it's easy to do and it takes minimal time. It's no effort, and you just eventually you're just doing it in your mind as you go. So we'll break down the acronym and dig in a little deeper to each one. So we'll start with strengths. Things you know you do well that are going to help your business grow, right? So what is it that you do in your business that you do well, that you're a master of, that's going to help you grow and help you build? What qualities separate you from the competition? drives you to succeed in your business, in your life? What is the ever popular why for you? And how strong is that? And how much do you attach to that? Because your why can sometimes be your greatest strength or motivator. Next one is the W, the weakness. Now this one's a little tough because you gotta be really self-critical to figure this out and nail this down properly, right? So, um, sorry, just there we go. You want to break it down and look at things that are going to hinder your progress or your success. It's also, like I said, the hardest part because you got to shine the light inward, you got to analyze yourself. And let's be honest, we don't like to do that, do we? Nobody likes to look inward, nobody likes to analyze themselves and say, This is my weakness. But you got to do it. And you also want to notice, take a look at things that your business is lacking. Are you lacking a process somewhere? Are you lacking some sort of software piece that's going to help you put the puzzle together? Or is there a piece of the puzzle somewhere that you've misunderstood and that's creating the weakness? Do you have a clear business plan that is mapped out? Because if you're just flying around willy-nilly, this is what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go do it. But you don't have it mapped out in some sort of plan, some sort of actionable steps, that's a weakness. Have you defined clearly who your client avatar is? What's a client avatar? Well, if you don't know what a client avatar is, that's a weakness. A client avatar is a breakdown of what your ideal client looks like. So when you're targeting your market, your ideal market, you're speaking to this client avatar that you've made up, that you've written down, that you've designed. So you know your marketing is more effective for you and your business. And all these things together, they're identified as weaknesses. But it's nothing that can't be changed, right? You look at your business, you be brutally honest, and you define your weaknesses, and you put the steps in motion to change them and move forward. Next up is, oh, opportunities. Opportunities is huge, right? Now you want to look outward. What hidden opportunities are out there for you and your business? Have you gone above and beyond your little niche you're in? 
whatever course you took that brought you in? Are you just stuck there? Or have you opened wide and looked around and explored all the different niches that are available to you so you can try and expand your opportunities and create more opportunities? Maybe there's an opportunity to partner with someone in your network, right? Maybe you're a wizard when it comes to words and copyright, but you suck at sales funnels. And over here, you've got Bob, who's a wizard with sales funnels, but sucks at copywriting. There's an opportunity for the two of you to come together, right? Trade off with each other, do things for each other, right? You write his copy, he builds your sales funnels, you balance it out, you pay each other off, you move forward. That's the kind of partnership opportunity I'm talking about. In short, opportunities is where you want to look at ways to grow your business and expand. And because let's be honest, none of us really just, okay, well, this is where I'm at in my business and I'm good here and I'm happy here. Some of you may, but the reality of it is we all want to look for different ways to grow our business if that's our thing. And seeking out those opportunities is the way to do it. For me, uh, my wife and I, we've got affiliate marketing. Uh, I've been writing some books. Uh, I've got coaching programs. So that's how we're expanding our uh, our business and working out those opportunities for growth. So you really want to think outside the box on this one and really dial into what those opportunities that are available are to you, right? Up next in the SWOT analysis acronym, we got T for threats. What are some of the threats that are going to affect your business goals and plans? And these are going to be outside and internal, depending on how you look at it. They're going to come from all aspects of your life, right? Because depending on where you're at and depending on how busy your life is outside of your business, depends on what kind of threats that you're going to have and how they're going to affect you, right? Maybe you're still working a full-time job, so you're time-restricted. Well, how can you how can you take that threat of losing time and find a way to make it work? Maybe when you originally started, you had the wrong mentor or coach, right? Because it happens. If it's not a good fit, how much is the threat to your business going to be if you're not mingling and jiving with that coach or that mentor? If you two truly don't, blend and meld together how effective is that going to be it's not it's going to suck mindset mindset is a huge threat to people trying to build a business right you might feel like maybe maybe you're not meant for success maybe you're not meant to achieve your dreams maybe the thought of being successful scares you and that holds you back Again, none of these are written in stone. These are all things that can be changed and worked through. Maybe when you jumped in, you jumped in with both feet and you picked the wrong niche. So you're not, you're not emotionally tied to what it is you're trying to do. Does that make sense? Because if you've just... If you just picked a niche because that's what it was when you came in with whatever course or program you took but that's not truly who you are. That's not truly what your passion is. It's going to be a hard sell for you. So imagine what it's going to be like trying to convince other people to come into your network and go with you and choose you. Right? So the important key thing about all of these threats, none of them are impossible to change, right? Every one of them can be changed. That's the cool thing, guys. Every one of them can be changed. So in a nutshell, a simple SWOT analysis will help you recognize opportunities and weaknesses when goal setting. Right? So you have this great – I lost my words. 
basically there it's a fluid idea it's constantly changing it's constantly going but the whole process overlaps each other right so you have your strengths your weaknesses your opportunities and your threats but your threats and your strengths overlap your strengths and your weaknesses overlap your opportunities and weaknesses overlap your threats and opportunities overlap so there's ways to change it all around so you find your strengths and threat strategies and take out those threats you turn your weaknesses into strengths <clears throat> And then there'll be weakness and opportunity strategies where you figure out ways to maybe take those weaknesses and turn them into opportunities. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> right? They all overlap. They all intertwine. And they work together to force you to truly analyze things as well as give you a balanced, aligned SWOT analysis when it's done right Does that make sense i really hope so so really in a nutshell you can take this and break it down even further if you wanted to right once you get your swat done you can break it down into your strengths you can have internal positive you can have opportunities which would be external positive and then you have your threats your external negative you have weaknesses internal negative right and then you make yourself a nice little table. So you have strength and opportunity strategies, which is a positive. Then you have ex strengths and threat strategies, which is still workable, right? You put it all together and you identify them and you break it all down. And then from there, it all transitions over towards planning out your SMART goals. So the key to goal planning and I've talked about this before, is making sure they're SMART, S-M-A-R-T. It's an another acronym, acronym, which is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So when you're making your goals, you want to break them down, and you want to start, and you want to be specific. So this is the part that gets really well-defined, clear, and just unambiguous right? Really dial in and narrow down. And when it, a SMART goal is done properly, specific, the S should answer the five W's, right? Who's involved in accomplishing this goal? Is it something you're just working on yourself? Are you outsourcing it to a virtual assistant? Or are you teaming up with somebody to make it happen? What, what do you want this goal to do, right? Be defined, be definitive, make it happen, make it understood what the purpose of this goal is. Where is the goal to be achieved? Are you working on something in-house? Are you working on something online on one of the platforms you're on? Or is it something different? And then when? When do you want to achieve this goal? Pretty self-explanatory, I would think, right? Why? Here's the big one everybody loses track of. Everybody gets so frustrated and fed up and because they lose track of their why. Why is it you want to achieve this specific goal? Next up, you want to make sure your plan measures up to your expectations. M, measurable, right? This is where you lay out the specific criteria so you can measure the progress of your goal. When you've done this part properly, you should be able to track progress and make sure you're on the right track as you proceed through uh, set out to accomplish your goal. And to make a goal measurable, you, you need to ask yourself things like how many, how much? How many days, weeks, or months are you going to allow for the success of this goal? Is it going to be like something you're going to do in a week? Is it going to be something you're going to do in a day? Is it something that's going to take you months to do? And you want to know how. You want to know how you're going to track that progress and how you know definitively what defines accomplishing that goal. 
and what? What are your progress indicators going to be, right? So let's say you want to grow your Instagram following, okay? Cool. You put a lot of attention into Instagram. You go on there one day and your mama, bless her heart, mamas always follow us, don't they? Your mama has decided that she's going to follow you on your Instagram. So is that it? You're done? You've gained progress. You've gained that one follower. Are you done? No, you're not. But that's how it turns out, right? What are your indicators? How much? How many? Where are you going with this goal? How big is it going to get? How far do you want to go? How many followers do you want to gain? You have to break it down and be like specific, measurable. Up next is attainable. So when you're doing SMART goals, the attainable part is this is going to help you find ways to realize that the goal is on track and work towards it. When it's done right, a SMART goal should make you feel challenged, but defined enough that it's possible. So you want to ask yourself the following, right? Do you have the capabilities and resources to achieve the goal? If not, what piece or resource are you missing? Who has done it before you successfully and how? So can you reach out to them for tips and advice if you're unsure how to attain it? Yes, you can. You just have to make that step. Next up in a SMART goal acronym is R for realistic. This goal has to be realistically attainable given the available resources and time you have. Right? So don't just go, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this, and if I get it, cool. No. Attainable, realistically. Uh, people get hung up on this part all the time. Chances are, if you're being genuine in the process, right, if you have gone through, you've done your SWOT, you've done your planning, you've mapped it all out, and now you're digging in. If you are being genuine in the process and you truly believe that it's something you can achieve, then 99% of the time it's a realistic goal. But to help you make that step, make that decision, three simple questions, right? First one, is the goal within reach? And am I being real? Are you stretching too far? Right? Are you putting it too far away so you can never reach it? Are you self-sabotaging so you can never reach it? Because I see a lot of people do that too, right? They'll make this goal, but then they're afraid to get there and be successful. So they'll stretch that out so far that there's no possible way they can achieve it. It's not realistic. Trust me on this one. I've done it. I'm sure we've all done it at one time or another. Second question. Can I reach this goal given my current timeline and my current resources? Again, right? Are you stretching that out so far? Are you being real? You've got your resources available. Are you trying to go above and beyond? Or are you staying within those resources and you're staying within reasonable timelines? Finally, for realistic, can you commit to yourself and to the success of this goal? Because if you cannot commit to the success of the goal, then you're not being real with yourself. You're not being true to yourself and you're self-sabotaging. Next, T is timely. A true smart goal must be time-bound. So you can't just, like I said earlier, right, willy-nilly, just, oh, here we go. Yep, this is my goal, and when I get there, I get there. If you've got no time restraints, if you've got no definitive time frame to accomplish these goals, 
How motivated are you going to be to get it done in a reasonable amount of time? How hard are you going to work to accomplish it? Because you're just willy-nilly, right? I'll get there when I get there. Oh, I should probably work on that goal today, but ah, I got time. Maybe later. Right? You have to be time-bound to your goal to get it done. Simple questions again to ask yourself as you're going through this process, right? Does your goal have a timeline? Because if it doesn't, again, like I said, right, you're not committed. You're not into it. By when do you want to achieve your goal? And can you achieve it sooner? So <clears throat> it's really kind of full circle the way it goes, right? Your SWOT analysis helps you map out, define what it is you want to achieve, and that leads into mapping out your goals, which are SMART goals because you've done the process and you're paying attention and you're trying to be truly successful and you're trying to be true to you. So now you've done your SWOT and you've done your SMART goals and you're thinking, hey, the title of this talks about how it all ties together the mindset, right? I'm glad you asked this question, Skippy. How does it all fit together? I'll tell you how it all fits together, Sunshine. If you haven't put in the time, you haven't put in the work, you haven't put in the energy, the effort, you haven't done a decent SWOT analysis, you haven't planned out those SMART goals, you're going to end up getting frustrated eventually, right? It's just the nature of the beast. It all comes together full circle, right? Your SWAT, your SMART goals, your mindset, it all ties together to the success of you and your business. Because if... If you don't plan it out, if you don't map it out, you're going to start getting frustrated. You're going to start getting irritated. You're just going to start whatever. So at the beginning of this whole process, you got to really dig deep. And you need to get right down to the core of your goals. And map out a SWOT analysis. Map out SMART goals. Because I'll tell you, the frustration you get from not mapping things out and not planning out properly is going to lead to so much frustration and poor mindset, right? If you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. And if you cannot achieve your goals and be successful, how long are you going to be in the career path you're on or building the business that you're trying to build. Because eventually, it all leads into this deep, dank, stinky swamp of procrastination where you're going to get stuck. You're going to get fed up. You're going to get frustrated. You're either going to throw your hands up, surrender, or you're just going to rinse and repeat the process, right? You're going to repeat the process. You're going to get stuck with that idea, that method, that whatever you're doing. And you're going to throw your hands up and be like, oh, this doesn't work. This is bold. This is crap. I never should have done this. And you're going to move on to the next thing. And that's going to happen again. And pretty soon you're back down in the swamp of frustration. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. It's a vicious cycle. We've all done it. Everybody does it until they catch on. They're like, oh, shit. Because repeating that cycle, all you're doing is you're wasting time. You're wasting energy. And more importantly, you're wasting money. Because each time you do this, it's another step. It's more gone, 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 right? It takes a toll on your mind, your psyche. If you're just stuck in this frame of mind, everything's hard and nothing's going to work. 
you are stuck in the cycle that drives you around and around and around and waste your time and waste your money and waste your energy. And eventually you work your way out of the swamp of procrastination. But now, now you're in the bog, the deep, dank, peat bog of frustration and defeat. And it's pulling you down. And it's dragging you under because you don't take the time to reset and refocus and map it all out the smart way. And you're just going in circles, spinning that loop, round and around and around and around and around and around and around and around. And around. This is not good. This is bull. This is a scam. The list of excuses goes on and on and on and on and on. All you are doing is scamming yourself. And really, you're breaking your own personal boundaries. You're breaking your own trust. Because you trust yourself to not push past your boundaries. You trust yourself to not go outside those limits and get to that point. But all you've done is broken that trust over and over and over again. So now what? Eventually, that bog pulls you down. You just throw your hands up. You surrender. No clear path. I don't need it. Fuck it. I'm out. And you just walk through life. No plan, no clear path. You got to find that vision. You got to find. You've got to find the way out of that frustrating procrastination, stinky swamp. And a peat bog of frustration is dragging you down. Reset. Refocus. Say, help. I need somebody. Because it's hard. It's hard to try and leave that swamp if you're there and you don't reach out for help. I've been there. I've been in that swamp. I'm telling you. This isn't something I'm just pulling out my ass on top of my head, right? I've lived it. I've done it. It sucks. You've got to find a way out. And nine times out of ten, you're going to need help to get there. Right? Whether you reach out to a Facebook group, because Lord knows there's a lot of those these days, isn't there? You find support that way, right? You find support through reaching out to these groups through making connections through whichever. Maybe you're lucky and you find a coach and a mentor who resonates with you, who touches you, reaches your soul with their story to help you. And they're actually genuine and they actually help you make your way out. Because that's the way. That's the way. Right? You have to. You have to admit to yourself that you can't do it yourself. And until you reach that point, until you, uh, until you reach that point, there's. There's no way for you to pull yourself out of that bog, right? So that's where a good coach or a good mentor will, will help you and pull you up. Not pull you out, not give you a hand out, but give you a hand up. And there's courses, right? Maybe you found a course online that's helping you, that's helping you look inward that's helping you make the shift to refocus your mind. It's helping you find ways 
to reach out, to build your network, to plan smartly, to map out goals the right way, the correct way. The bottom line out of all of this, if you take anything away from this at all, if there's only one thing you take away, it's this. You have to be accountable to you. If you take nothing else away from this, I hope you take that away from this, if nothing else. You have to be accountable to you in order for you to do what you're meant to do, to be the, <clears throat> excuse me, to be the success that you are meant to be. Does that make sense? I hope so. So, here it is. You ready? I've given you a lot of things. I've dropped some knowledge here today, and I hope, I really hope it's resonating with you, and I hope you're taking something away from this. Right? So, here's my crazy point to all of this, my evil plan. <laughs> Are you feeling frustrated and you're stuck in that swamp? Are you feeling the pain and the point where you need to get out, but you don't know how? Let me tell you there's a way. I have an opportunity open for the right people to come on board with me, and we will get you refocused, and we will get you driven. We will get you out of the swamp and out of the dank, peat moss, stink of frustration and defeat and get you focused and back on the path to your success. Now, let's be clear, right? This opportunity I'm offering isn't going to be for everybody. Some of you are going to be cool and you're ready and you're good. Some of you aren't ready to commit yet, and that's okay too. But you've got to commit eventually. There's just no other There's no other way around this, right? If you can't commit to your success, you can't be true to yourself, and you can't, you can't stop breaking your own trust to yourself, it's time to make the change, isn't it? If you're ready, you know you need to make a shift and you're committed to you and your success. Then drop an I'm committed in the comments. And when this is done, I'll reach out to you and we'll discuss this opportunity. But it sounds right, then cool, we'll go further. I'm here to help you. That is my goal. That is my focus. That is my mission in life is to come here and help as many people as I can get their heads right, get out of the game, and get refocused, and get back into it. That's it. It's that simple. Because you got to own it. You've got to take control, and you have to own your success. You have to own your commitment to drive forward to your success. That's it. That's that's all I got to say. That's all I wanted to get off my chest. That's what I wanted to share with you today. SWOT analysis, smart goals, mindset, it all comes together, right? It all keeps you driving your path. It all keeps you moving forward to your success. So, I have a cool worksheet that we use for mapping out our SMART goals. If you want a copy of it, you want to see it, drop a SMART in the comments and I'll send it over to you. 
it's on a Google Doc, so it can change all the way you want. It's a fluid document, right? It's always changing. So I hope what I'm telling you is helping. I hope what I'm driven here today is resonating with you, right? I really hope it's come together. And I, that's all I got. I just, I'm here to help. I'm genuine. So, has anybody got any questions about SWOT analysis and SMART goals? Drop them in the comments. If not, then we'll get on. We'll all get on with our day. Everybody's good. Everybody's happy. Does this make sense to everybody? I really hope so. I really hope so. All right, guys. I've taken enough of your afternoon. Thanks for joining me here today. I really hope you took something away from this. And uh, if you're watching the replay, catch on. It's going to be good. Be well. Be present. Always move forward. Thanks for coming, guys.